up front tonight, cyber safety and what you can do to protect your child. If you're like a lot of people, if you're like a lot of parents out there, you're trying to protect your, you're monitoring their, you're monitoring their internet usage and monitoring what they can or cannot go on. But what happens when they don't? What happens when parents don't supervise their child into what they're doing on the internet? So I'm going to tell you a lot of things, including talking with people who monitor their kids and don't monitor their kids, and accusing those who do, and accusing those who don't protect their kids a lot, with some startling information that you at home may know. These questions result in a one-day company break investigation into why parents don't monitor their kids. We looked at some research, and uh, we looked we looked at research, found some studies, and basically. You will know a lot about them. You will know a lot about cyber safety than everyone else knows. Let's start at the beginning. Okay, it's the first time, like, uh, it's like the very first time. You show your child a computer and then internet usage, like, it's the very first time. In fact, there have been some studies over, like, some time. There have been some studies that have been conducted over over the years about children, teens, and their internet use. So that's why throughout this half hour I've been giving you I'm giving you guys some facts here. I've got the facts. I put together the trail. So I'm dedicating most probably all this half hour just to help you guys stand tall, stand strong and say Enough's enough. Something has to be done here. I am so sorry about that. But if uh, things have to be done, things have to be done. What you have to do is just make sure your child, your child is being monitored at all times. Basically, telling your kids not to talk to strangers. But none of these people know it anyway. And even if they did, I don't know. This be a debate over across town. As a matter of fact, it's happening tonight at the auditorium to where people have based sides. Well, it's an opportunity for me to do my side and then talk over there and do it on camera. But I am going to talk with parents out there after this is over. Something like that. And then basically give you tools what you need to do to make sure that your children don't get approached by strangers or predators. Now, a few seasons ago, we talked about internet predators. And I've been giving the rec I'm gonna give you guys a recommendation to have your child watch to catch a predator. To catch a predator. Now, you may be like, oh my God, I'm not gonna have my child watch to catch a predator. Are you crazy? No, it's a simple, basic teaching tool to, have, to help you guys understand about these kind of people who show up at their houses Look for a date and then possibly this and that and the other. They'll teach them that this and that's against the law. And if something should happen, you need to teach your child about using the emergency services, about this and that and the other. Something has to be done. That's why I'm here to talk to you about this. And, um, you know, over five years of doing this show, I've never come across cyber safety before and talk about this. This is actually the first time in my five years talking about this. And, helping parents, teens, and children understand about this. So we're gonna basically start off with the parental controls. Now, if you are if you have parental controls on your internet, on your computer, or whatever, you're basically, what you have basically done is set parental controls on both your phone and on, and basically on, on the computer. You know, when uh, stuff like this happens, it's just basically, food for thought, it's just like basically, it's basic food for thought. We did some uh, info and studying on this, and we found that uh, more than 60% of parents
tell their child, monitor their what the website their child is visiting and what their child is doing on social media. Well, 35% have passwords for their social media. That means basically, basically like using lots of controls. About 94% of parents and even teens are discussing what type of things should be should not be shared online. 93 percent and 85 uh, percent of teens say they have discussed ways to use internet and lots of ways. And those ways are possibly using software, software that is either free or expensive. A lot of expenses. Even schools are using this to block. And even schools are using some of it to block their kids to help them pay attention. Yeah, that's why I'm going there. The school must spend a lot of money use one of the free things that they use just to basically do whatever it takes to just do this. Um, and while well, 97% of parents have discussed with their teen what he or she has been doing online, history browsers have been doing it, and. Uh, Things have to happen for this week. I mean, these series were conducted, they're provided by Pew Research. I'll provide all these links in the description below. I'm going to spend this entire half hour talking about cyber safety. Next, some tips, of what, some tips for you and your child and your teen on what can happen. Plus, more of our studies when we come back. Welcome back. If you're just joining us tonight, we're focusing this half hour on cyber safety and what you can and what parents can do for their kids and teens. So far, I've looked at some studies about parental controls and about what school and the school why the schools doing the same thing. It's just basically like protecting their kids. I mean, they have to monitor what's going on. That can help cost the taxpayers a lot of money. Now when it goes on to social media, people, many parents have friended their teens just basically because they want to see what's going on online. I mean, I personally don't see a problem with that, but according to a study, 39% of parents have friended their teen, teenager on social networking sites. While two thirds of social media using teens report that their parents have checked their social media profile. And 63% of parents have used parental controls on teen social media, meaning on their computers, computers and uh, cell phones. Eighty-five percent of parents in the group have checked to see what info is available online about their child. While forty-five percent of parents have not fronted their teen. Half the parents say they use parental controls to manage their teens' internet use. Sorry about the background. 34% of parents report parental controls on their phone. 19% of teens report in their parents' use of tools. 2% of teens don't know if the parents are using parental controls. 17% use both forms of control. And 41% don't use any control, which is good, basically. While 54% of parents have used parental controls to restrict access to the internet, including the school, 34% have used teen cell phone for parental controls child device. 42% of parents use one point of control. 17% use parental control for both locations, being on the computer and on the cell phone. I don't think it's a waste of time to just be doing this. I mean, that's a lot of like peer pressure. That's just like raising stress now to the higher point level here. It's like it's like you're talking to a wall, like saying, Don't be doing this, don't be doing that. We tell the children, don't do the, don't do this, do that, and like because if we do, then blah 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 blah, and I think. I think most of the parents don't even understand it. Blah, blah, blah. But there are a lot of things kids can do. You need to tell your kids that strangers, like we always tell our kids, don't talk to strangers. And that's exactly what people do. They don't talk to they don't they don't talk to strangers at all. They just basically they basically fall in. And most people just fall. And just basically every kid follows that rule. Don't talk to strangers online or in person without supervision. Unless you know that person. If you know that person, okay. But you need to have parental supervision. I worry about people. I worry about people a lot. I worry about I'm worried about everyone. I'm worried about children. 
being kidnapped and sold as like I don't know slaves or something. It's just it's just not as simple. It's just reading through a car or something, reading it through a big teleprompter. But all these studies here don't lie. Like listen to this. 88% of adults have phones, 92% have broadband connections, 67 have uh, SNS, which is SNS, so I'll explain that later. 96% of parents own laptops, 76% is the same in the overall population. But it's not that bad for people to have a lot of things, but if you're gonna, but if, if it's your computer, it's your computer. You don't have, but you don't. If they're gonna use it every day, you don't have to monitor them every day. You just maybe monitor them like once, twice, like once every two weeks, twice every two weeks, every three weeks. Just make sure to know what they're doing. We check up on them, like every time. And always, you gotta keep a computer right in the living room. Don't put it. Don't like put it in their room or something. It's just as simple as just I don't know. Um, pondering your kids something like that and and um I don't know what to say I'm not even at the meeting right now I'm I'm basically outside I mean, you know, if I want to go inside I talk with people a lot about internet use and all but that's another show with consent it was Time this airs goes on YouTube. Everyone's gonna be pointing the finger at me, saying, "You think I have permission to do this? You have permission to do that?" Blah 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 blah. Somebody's just like telling me and wasting my time here. I mean, I'm trying to help. Every parent has to learn to stand strong and just basically say, "I have to monitor my child, figure out what they're doing." That's enough here. Something has to happen. If nothing happens, then. We're going to go back to square one. And it's just something else. I mean, something else that even bothers kids. They don't even talk to their parents about it. But there's more studies. And still ahead, though, those studies and polls, including tips for parents, teens, and for parents, teens, and their children. Things have to happen. If you just join this, well, basically, this is the very first thing. We're not, I'm not the first show on YouTube to be discussing this. We're talking about cyber. We're talking about cyber safety here, and what parents and parents, kids, and their teens can do to get themselves from strangers. We focused on this years ago, and talking about protecting our, protecting our kids from internet predators. That's the whole. That's the whole basic. Thing. But throughout these studies, it's just as simple as this. 13% of teens online say they know what they've been bothered by something that happened in something they saw online. 91% of parents with children 12 to 17 own cell phones, while 86%, 86% send and receive text messages. That's a thinker. That's it for the studies. I mean, look, this is just as simple as freaking... Not just simple, just check up on your. It's not like simple, just check up on your kids every now and they make sure they're doing, they're okay. I mean, it's not that simple. We have to make sure that everybody is doing what they're doing and making sure nobody's out doing something, nobody's walking over to a stranger's house, something like that. We have to make sure that everyone is basing their own, we have to make sure that uh, everyone's protected. And a lot of children here are being safe. Teach your children about cyber safety. It's very important. You teach them a lot about their it's all about cyber safety. And when the first time you're on the phone as a teen, you don't have you don't need to be putting parental controls. That's something for kids. And if you do this for if you do this for teens, they're gonna just basically go down that hole. They're gonna go down that hole, throwing tantrums, all that crap, blah blah blah. And yet you're gonna be able, you're gonna be the one saying, What did I do? If you take off the parental controls at 18. They didn't qualify as adults, but for teens and kids, teens at 18, I don't, teens at 18, I don't think it's a great idea, but for teens and kids, I really think you need to set the limits. And those limits are by restricting internet use, restricting the bad websites you can go on to, don't allow them to watch any 
videos that'll teach them bad habits, educational films work. That's why there's the YouTube Kids app. Now, if you've never heard of the YouTube Kids app, I've certainly heard of it. I mean, if you have YouTube, you basically if you're watching a video while you're scrolling through other videos, if you set if you're uploading a video and you set it on, yes, it's for kids. You can't watch it while you can't be scrolling through other videos while it's basically playing. And if you'd like to learn more information, we'll have a we'll have that for you coming up in just a that for you in just a minute. But it's very important here. It's very important if you're I mean very simple as just saying this and that. You gotta talk to your kids. You need to tell your kids that these bad guys are out there, they won't be punished and together. You guys come up with a plan about about a lot of safety. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there. There's people. And a lot of this discussion is just basically this and that and the other. I mean, I'm here to help. If people are wise and just look, watch a show and say, this guy knows what he's talking about. I'm going to give this guy a chance and listen to what he's talking about. Every parent needs to understand. You can't be monitoring your child, being strict about your night use on 24-7. It's just not that simple. It's not, not that simple. It's just saying, oh, I care about my child so much, blah, blah, blah. This, that, and the other. So I just monitor what goes on online. I think what has to happen here, if we don't monitor what happens with our child someday, they're going to end up missing in the ditch dead or even worse so let's just be reasonable about this and just come together form a plan and say something has to happen there are steps parents can take to make sure we do this but I have the safety tips I have the research Mind you, this took seven pages. This took like seven pages and someone managed for me to complete this research before I came on the air. So, I mean, for kids, it's just, this is a section for you guys. It's just, front controls, filters are many places to store, search, search engines have safe search features. Cell phones also have front control options. Apps tell parents can take care of sick and live virtually. Hackers and predators find a way to bypass filters and efforts. Some violent, Content that appears to be designed for children to have been disturbing, doubt, be cautious. Watch viewers for children allowed to watch them. Be wary of games with built in chat functions like Twitch, something like that. There's no need to be paranoid. Just take basic precautions on your children and end usage and talk to them about how to stay safe online. Have them watch a video or two, or have them watch to catch a predator. Those are some good examples. As for teens, they'll use internet with, without direct supervision. For that to happen, GED was just limit the technology use, use an app like Apple's Screen Time to monitor and strip the phone, tablet computer use. Similar apps exist for Android devices and other devices. Also, this is the key. You need to keep your you need to keep devices out of the bedrooms. Computers, phones, tablets are allowed in only communication areas of the house, easier to monitor usage. You can implement a rule like their old family members, including parents, charge the devices in the kitchen or living room overnight. But it would be beneficial to you. Studies have shown lifting screen users before bed increases the sleep quality up here. But it doesn't decrease. Increase means up, and decrease means down. Talk about the internet. Every teenager should feel comfortable about going to their parents and growing concerns about things they see online. Try to be open with your kids about the dangers of the internet and let them know you're there to help them protect them. Also, prevent them for the future. Youngsters shouldn't depend on their parents and guardians to provide protection and advice, but parents should also refer for their children for independence. You need to talk to your children about things like responsible banking, password safety, and data protection. And this brings us to some of these tips, like about passwords. Use protect your personal information with strong passwords. Meaning, you create new password. You need to pay attention to your strong password requirements. Change your passwords often. Don't share your passwords with other people. Don't use common, easily guessable passwords. Make sure password the password head stored securely. Break your passwords in encrypted support. 
password to encrypt the file on your computer or select another secure password storage method. Keep your information private. This is the big one, the biggest cake ever. When you sign up for something online, read the terms and conditions. Never enter your financial information or website that isn't secure. Look at the padlock HTTPS prefix in the browser that goes to the end. If you suspect some credit card information being misused online, you need to turn off the card using the SMB SD mobile banking app from your from wherever. But it's very important for you to protect your personal information online too, because once sensitive information is stolen, you can browse online. Tip like shielding pin pad when you're making purchases and learning to spot credit card scammer under gas pumps. Using a chip card is another way to protect your financial information. The more sophisticated chip technology is, one reason why chip card is more secure. Make sure your devices are secure. You don't have password technology options like fingerprint readers, face scanning technology. One of the today, 36% of smartphone users didn't use passwords, screen locks, or security features. I'm not one of them, I'm 34%. Secure all devices, including computers, phones, tablets, devices like smart watches, TV. Pay attention to lost software updates. Set automatic updates if you don't miss one. Um, be careful about Wi Fi. Do, don't, do not trust public Wi Fi security, work in the unsecure public places. Make sure you own Wi Fi networks to protect with strong passwords. Remember tip number one change your Wi Fi password periodically. Set up your two factor authentication. I already did that on my phone. Enable two factor authentication from access to personal account information. At this extra security, protect your account safe, even if someone knows. And the key one is back up your personal data. It is very, very important. Back up personal information on external hard drives and then create new backups wherever you're already now and then. We're back in a moment. Well, we've now run out of time, but we're going to continue this discussion tomorrow about internet and uh, about a cyber safety. Now, what else can you do to protect your kids from this type of stuff? How else can you monitor your kids' internet usage? How can you restrict it for teens? What software can you use? And what else can you do to protect yourself and your family from stuff like this? You do not want to miss part two of our cyber safety. I would show you a preview, but I didn't have time. Trust me, you do not want to miss part two of this. Because together, we can work together to come up with a plan and stay safe from all internet usage. Especially protect ourselves from internet predators out there. Because there are strangers out there on the internet. There's people out there that will just take your crap and then sell your identity. And you could probably be charged with identity theft. It's just that simple as changing your passwords frequently and using strong passwords. Together, you and I, and everybody else here in the bluff, and in the state, and here in the city, can make a difference by protecting our kids of all the bad stuff that's out there. So let's try to be safe as we approach 2022. That's all for this edition of Company Break Thursday, parts. That's all for this edition of Company Break Thursday. We'll see you again for Company Break Friday. For all of us here at YouTube, have a good night.